Hey, yo the keys. What's this? Another face in any videos? It is I, Silverlink. Twitch.tv slash Silverlink. Yesterday, you watched the video about Andy putting a Polaroid picture in OBS. And today, we're going to extend that feature with OBS Discord so that you can send that picture or any source to, straight to Discord. So, yeah. Take it away, Andy. Oh, yeah. And put your rocket to the stone. Right, so to get this all working, there are a few things that we're gonna need to get. For this example, I'm gonna be using the video that I released yesterday, which is the Polaroid Picture 2.0, which you can get from the Stream Up website just here. I'll leave all the link in the description, you know how it is. Uh, all the info on how to install it is here, and also a video in case you get stuck. And then we need to download this actual plugin OBS code, which will be available from our latest product section or in the products bit and go down to tools. It'll be available just here. Obviously it's not live right now for obvious reasons because people will be getting it. But as of this video, it will be there. So you can download it directly from there. So once you've got it downloaded, you will find a zip file. So we just need to right click it and then we're just gonna extract everything just in wherever, wherever, it's completely up to you. And then we're gonna open up the folder and we've got the install instructions which takes you to the product page on the StreamUp website because all the instructions are there. And we've also got the Leoran board install and the StreamUp board install so you can use either one. Leoran board is just standard LBE but for this example, we're gonna be using StreamUp bot as Polaroid Picture is only available for StreamUp bot as of right now. So we've got this text document just here so we're gonna open up StreamUp bot. So we've got StreamerBot just here, and we're gonna left click inside of StreamerBot and go to import. Once that's selected, you'll be able to uh, import a string just here. Make sure you are on version 0.1.3 or above, all right? Otherwise this will not work, so you'll just check this little bit. It'll tell you if you need to update, all right? So we're gonna get this text document, and we can either drag and drop it, like so, into here, might take a second, it'll load all the information there, or if you can't do that, just double click into the text document and literally control A to select all and then control C, close it down and you can paste it in there as well. And then you should get all this information here saying it's gonna install this deck. Just press import, that's all done. And you'll get this little section saying stream up tools just here with stream up tools OBS code. So we just gonna click into that and we can get setting it up. So, the first thing we need to do is we don't edit anything in this top one here, so don't worry. We don't edit anything in the top one or the bottom one, okay? So we're only editing the ones in the middle, and this is just to customize it to your liking, so it's completely up to you. So the Discord webhook URL settings, hit a little plus sign next to it, and you get some information here that Silver's put in. So to create a webhook, you can look here. Um, so if we just double click into that, we can actually copy this URL just here, press OK, and when I go, on here, it'll take us to the Discord website and we can read how to make a webhook, but I'm gonna show you that as well, so don't worry. So we're gonna go to Discord, just here. Let me just load into a channel. There we go. So we've got Discord just here, and all we need to do is select the uh, the the place that we wanna use it. So I'm gonna do the Lippy Committee, and I'm gonna press the uh, down arrow, and we're gonna go to Server Settings. So this can be in any server that you're a moderator. Then you need to go to Integrations, and then you'll see webhooks just here. Select webhooks. And you can see I actually filmed this video yesterday but forgot to turn my microphone on. So I'm just going to delete this webhook and make a new one. So I'm going to press new webhook. I'm going to call it uh, Spideybot. Yeah, we'll go with that. We we'll select a channel that we want it to be in. So I'm going to put it in Andy's safe space because it sounds safe there. And then we just press save changes at the bottom. Something we need to do is make sure we press copy webhook URL like so. So that'll say it's copied and it's all good to go. Jump back to streamer bar and we're gonna zoom in and you'll see set argument discord webhook URL. We're gonna double click that and select this value box at the bottom. Control A, delete everything that's in there, make sure there's no blank space. And we're just gonna paste that link directly and press okay. There we go, webhook is set up, ready to go. You can obviously change where you want that bot to post the pictures to as well, that's completely up to you. So upload to Discord toggle switch. This is only if you want it to save to your computer and not just be uploaded to Discord as well. So if you want it to be uploaded uh, 
to Discord, you leave it as true. If you don't, you just turn this to false just here because you can use this plugin to basically save any screenshots to your computer as well. So that is that section. The next one down is OBS screenshot file location settings. So this is where it's going to save it to on your computer. So it tells you the default value. Uh, we need to put where we want it to be saved in here. So as standard, it's going to save it into your pictures folder and it's going to create a folder called OBS code. So if I go down into my uh, pictures folder, you can see I've got an OBS code folder here. If I deleted that, it's going to actually create a folder in there for me. So you can see I've deleted that. I'm going to minimize it and we're going to leave it as standard. If you wanted to edit it, you just double click into it. Make sure you use backslashes as well when using a file location. And also in the final folder, make sure there's also a backslash at the end. Press OK. I'm happy with the default on that one. We're going to go to the next box down, which is the file name settings. So the default value is OBS code. So it's going to come up with a time uh, and date first and then a little dash and then the name of whatever you want it to be here you could use some kind of variable so if you want the image name um as so what somebody's written in the box you can save that as a variable and add it in there or it's completely up to you how you want to sort this out i'm going to leave that up to your imagination and see if you guys can set that up that'd be really awesome let me know how you get on uh, and then by the person that redeemed it just there as well. So I'm just going to leave it as OBS code. That's fine with me. If you want to change the, the name of the file, just change that there. We're going to go to the next box, which is uh, the screenshot file extension settings. So we can save it as a JPG or a PNG. You just double click into this and change it to JPG or PNG. Up to you. I'm going to leave it as PNG. And then we need to go to OBS source name settings. And this is where we're going to put whatever source we want to take a photo of. Because we're using the, the, the Polaroid picture, I'm going to go into OBS, go to the Polaroid picture uh, scene just here, and then we're going to go to this group. We're going to select the group, press F2. That's going to highlight the entire text. Control C to copy it. And then we're going to go back to Streamerbot. We're going to double click on the set argument section just here. And we're going to pay, delete what's in the value box. And we're going to paste that name directly in there. Make sure there's no blank spaces or anything like that. So that's now set up the OBS source name. There is one more thing that we need to do here, but I believe Nate is going to fix this in a future update of Streamerbot. So if you're watching this further down the line, you won't have to do this. It should do it automatically. So when we double click into this execute code in, even though I've said do not edit anything in this group, uh, right now we need to. So we're going to open up the execute code. You don't need to know what any of this means. Don't worry. It might look daunting because when you press find refs, it's meant to get all the references uh, and set it going. But hopefully this gets fixed, but it doesn't. So we need to manually add them. So we press the references tab at the bottom and then we right click and press add reference from file. It's going to take us to this file. Make sure it's the Windows, Microsoft.net, Framework, and then version 4.0.30319. That should be the, the one that is there or basically as up to date as that as well. You'll know if you're in the right place because it won't be able to add the files that we're going to search for now. So the files we're going to search for, we can just press this file, highlight this file name bit at the bottom because this is going to automatically search for us. We're just going to type in system.dll just there. Or even if we don't type full DLL, you can actually just do the auto select at the bottom here. So when I type in, I can just select it and press open. That's going to add that into there. We're going to right click again and add reference once again. And we're going to start typing in the bottom. So I'm going to do system.net.http.dll uh, just here. So we're going to select that one. Make sure these are exactly as mine, I'm going to leave all the references down in the description so you can just copy and paste them if you really wanted to. And then the last one we're going to add is system.runtime.serialization.dll just here. We're going to press that one, press open, and then we're just going to go back to the compiling log. And when we press compile, you should see building out the needed information and it should say it's compiled successfully. Press save and compile. That is it. That's all set up, ready to go now. So we're going to close that group. Now that we've set all that command up, we never need to really change any settings there as long as we're using this same source for everything. You can copy it and paste this command as many times if you want it for different sources and stuff like that. You're more than welcome to. You can just duplicate it, change the settings, all that jazz. Uh, but for this, I need to add it to the Polaroid picture effect. 
So we're going to go to the Polaroid picture effect on the left hand side and I'm going to go up to animate. We're going to open that. You'll probably see I added this little section here that says add OBS chord here. So we're at, that's exactly what we're going to do just between these two delays. So we're going to right click on animate, go to add action, press action, and then on the drop down menu all the way to the bottom, stream up tools, OBS chord. That should be the last one that you installed, so it'll be at the bottom. Leave run action immediately checked and press OK. Now you'll see it's in the wrong place. We need to select it and we can either press Control and up and that'll move it up one or you can right click it, go down to move and press up and down just there as needed. And if you want to, you can delete this one in here if you want to make it look a little bit cleaner. It's up to you. That was only a comment to tell you guys what to do. So. We've got everything set up. It's all good to go. If I go to Discord, you can see I haven't got anything in this page right now. But now if I go to my OBS and fire up my channel point, which is take a photo. And I'm going to put this as a test for YouTube. And if you remember earlier in the video, that file folder was empty. Will this work? It's going to fly, animate on screen, look all cool like it normally does. Look sound. If I go into my file location in pictures, you'll see it's created the folder just here. We double click into it. We can open this picture if we want to. This is a test for YouTube. We've got it saved to our hard drive. We're never going to lose any of the memories. Remember all your days streaming. And then if we now go to Discord, as if by magic, it's got all the info, the message that was on there, also the person that redeemed it as well, which is freaking awesome. And it's all good to go. Like I say, you can use this on anything, anything, any source, anything that you want to take a screenshot of. It'll literally just take a screenshot in that moment, save it. So it doesn't have to be on a freeze frame or anything like that. It could be mid gameplay, completely up to you how you want to use this and add it to any of your streamer bot uh, actions. Obviously, I know there's a little bit of a setup, but hopefully in the future when Nate releases an update to streamer bot, you won't have to do the references bit and everything like that. I've got a load of cool ideas that I want to show you with using Polaroid picture and stuff like that. So just bear with me whilst I'm designing it and making it. I'm going to make it a nice easy installer just like we do with all the stream up stuff now. We're converting all the stream up stuff as well. It takes a long time. So if you want to support us at stream up, then consider joining Patreon or just doing a small donation when you do download our products because it'll help us further develop the plugin and go, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, all right? Shh, shh, shh. But yeah, that's everything in this video. If you want to support me, then consider joining Patreon or joining the channel members down below. You know all that stuff because uh, these videos take me a long time to obviously make all that jazz. And I'll see you in the next one, all right, guys? Put your rock over the stone. See you soon. I just want to say a huge thanks to all my patrons that help make this content full time, make it free for you guys. And also a huge thanks to all my YouTube members. You, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for everything that you do for me and the community. Keep it up, guys.